Here at the Save It For Parts channel, we love auctions. And I'm not just talking the big name website auctions, I'm talking local surplus police auctions, companies going out of business, things like that. You can find all kinds of crazy junk at these for pennies on the dollar. Now, I started doing auctions back in college when we'd go to this one that was held in a series of trailers stacked on top of each other with dogs on the roof, and they had all kinds of stuff the police had confiscated. These days, I live in a bigger city, and the auctions might be a little less colorful, but they still have some interesting stuff, such as... An entire DNA sequencing laboratory setup. Now, my winning bid on this entire thing, all this stuff, was $85. That's less than a home DNA test that I've seen advertised on TV. Those things go for $100, $150, over $200. Heck, even getting your cat's DNA tested is over $100. So I think I got a pretty good deal on all this junk. Now, I don't know how it works. I don't know if it does work. I don't know if I'll be able to tell anything about my own ancestry or create some mutant monsters in the basement. Fools, fools, let them search. Or even get the thing to turn on, but it's still kind of cool. This thing appears to be new in the box, or in this case, on the pallet. It was a little bit bigger than I expected it to be, and I didn't know if it would fit in the car, but somehow we got this thing home from the auction company. Okay, so what do I actually have? What's in here? What does a DNA sequencer look like? Let's do a little unboxing and find out. All right, we've got a uh, vacuum thingy. Some loose parts in there, never a good sign, but we'll set that aside and come back to it. This looks like a pretty generic Dell computer monitor, all essentially new in the box. All right, and then we've got the computer system that actually runs this laboratory. So again, pretty standard looking Dell desktop. This one's designed for Windows Vista, so you know it's quality. All right, so aside from the vacuum manifold dingus, this is all pretty generic computer equipment. Let's see what's in the big box. All right. We have a giant mystery Nalgene bottle. Give water to a gigantic hamster with that. Got a mysterious box here. It says this side up, it was definitely stored sideways in there, so let's see if anything fun spilled. This seems to be mostly packing material and a blue thing that is definitely a thing. We've got another keyboard, maybe? Oh no, this is actually some kind of uh, science junk. We've got a little test tube here and whatever these are. All right, these seem to be some kind of a plug-in module uh, for our sequencer here. I don't quite know what this is. Yeah, we're gonna set this aside. Don't know what it is yet. Don't really want to open it up yet because I don't want to damage it. All right, we've got another little box. So lots of stuff in this one. Got another Nalgene bottle. Got some very uh, heavy little metal plates. This one says uh, GLS conditioning and this one's an illusion buffer. A big dye mix, some beads and oil and some more things that look like test tube or sample holders. Okay, so we're still getting to the guts of this thing, the actual lab unit or sequencer unit that's inside this crate. Let's see if we can get the whole box apart and look at it. Okay, so this appears to be our DNA sequencing lab in a box. So this is an Apollo 100 by Intigen X. Not sure if they're around anymore. I think they've been bought out by somebody else. And uh, we've got our test bed or operations bed here. I don't know what any of the components of this are, and I really don't know what it does. So I'm going to get all of the terminology completely wrong. But it looks like some of those sample holders or test tube holders go in here. And then those microchip things go in here with the cartridge connectors. It's got this uh, XY axis, like a 3D printer up top, and then this little fluid handling arm that I guess comes down, grabs stuff out of the samples and the reagents, and then drops it onto those cartridges. Got our big old power switch, our power input, and our serial port uh, straight out of the 1970s. Remember when serial ports were the size of printer ports? Heck, does anyone remember serial ports and printer ports? 
Um, looks like Tcan makes part of this. I think from what I found, um, Tcan is the company that makes the frame and some of the uh, motors and stuff. And then Intigen X makes some of the fluid handling stuff. I'm not 100% sure. There's not a lot of information on this out there. There's a couple websites on the Wayback Machine. There's a couple uh, professional papers about using this, but there's really not much else. There's no brochures I can find. There's no pricing information for what this originally cost. I'm, I'm sure it was over $10,000 originally. Um, but yeah, this is it's a little older, obviously, and they don't really use this anymore. And like I said, I don't think the company is around anymore. So might be hit or miss actually being able to do anything with this. There's some USB ports over there, so it does have some slightly modern technology. Now I think these ports here are going to match up to our other blue thing and um, some of the pressure ports that come in and out of that. I'm still not sure what this is or why it's a separate unit, but it definitely seems to interface over here. There's some signs that this is fairly new, especially because all of the packing material and kind of buffers and whatnot are in place, so it's definitely set up for shipment. However, there's also signs that it's used because there's some painter's tape on stuff and some of the things are just kind of loosely bagged up. So I don't know if this has been used. I don't know what it's been used for. I don't know what kind of crazy mad science experiments have gone on with this device in the past. Since I have absolutely no idea how to properly use this, the obvious next step is to hook up the computer, turn it on, and see if there's a button in the software for start cloning dinosaurs. Hey, the computer seems to work at least, so if nothing else, I've spent my $85 wisely on a computer from 12 years ago that's worth $20. Oh, thank goodness, I was worried it was really going to be Windows Vista, but fortunately, it's the good one. Okay, so as I'm setting this up in my attempt to open the Cretaceous Resort, I'm realizing that the auction company forgot a few things. There are definitely supposed to be some cables that go from the computer over to our uh, clonomat here. Okay, I called the auction company. They're going to look for those cables. They don't know what happened to them. Um, this thing has gone through several owners. Obviously, if it's from 2009, 2010, uh, who knows where the parts have gone along the way. This is one of the drawbacks of buying things from a surplus auction. A device that cost ten, twenty thousand $20,000 back in 2009 now is worth the ten dollars that the computer is worth because somebody lost the special USB cable five years ago and nothing else works without it. So we may or may not be able to actually do anything with this like clone dinosaurs but it's still kind of cool to have it. I'm sure there are some useful parts in here so even if we can't hook it up, even if we can't get it running, I could probably tear it apart. I could probably manufacture this into something else or maybe there's somebody out there on eBay that's looking for some parts for one of these. And I can always use another Windows XP box. I mean, even if I'm not able to commit crimes against nature right off the bat, at least I can play 3D Space Pinball. So I was hoping to fire up the software and see what that looked like, maybe see if somebody left their DNA in there from the last user. Now that would be a data breach. Uh, but unfortunately, it won't even load up without a serial port connection to the main unit, so I can't really do anything with this without those cables. I did manage to find some user guides on the system, so that's a plus if we ever manage to get this running. And I have found some log files from prior uses of this machine. Still don't know what any of it means, though. Now, I hate to just give up on this thing right now, and I do have about every cable ever made in this box of junk hoarded away, so let's see if we can talk to it. Well, I do have a USB to serial cable. Um, unfortunately, it's just the regular 9-pin serial. It's not that 25-pin printer cord from 1976. Ah, here we go. See, I knew if I dug around in my garbage long enough, I would find an adapter to go from 9-pin to 25-pin because, hey, you never know when you're going to run into some old tech that needs something ridiculous like this. So next we need a weird double-ended USB cable that's just USB-A on both ends. All right, there's one of those. Once again, save it for parts or professional hoarding saves the day. If you never throw anything away, you'll always have what you need. You might not be able to find it right away, especially if your work area looks like mine, but hey, at least you'll have it. All right, we've got our piece together cable. Let's turn this thing on and see if it does stuff. Okay, we're still getting initialization errors. We're gonna try this again. We've skipped the USB to serial adapter. We're just going straight from nine pin serial on the Dell to 25 pin serial on the device. And we're loading up the software again. 
And we've actually got some motion on our robot arm now. Oh, that sounded terrible. So the manual claims I can recalibrate this system from the software, but I can't even get it to go into the software. It just crashes before that. So I'm trying to find uh, some more troubleshooting info in here. I've also learned that uh, this thing actually needs like microchip keys or product keys. So there might actually be some kind of DRM going on here before you can actually read DNA. This is all way more complicated than I thought. I was expecting to just turn this thing on, spit in a tube, and it would tell me if I'm Italian, but apparently biological science takes way more effort. All right, while this video is rapidly losing interest from my viewers due to nothing happening, I'm going to try this one more time. I have two USB A to A connections. I have the serial port connection, and we are going to try to fire this up again and see if it does stuff. All right, it made not bad noises this time. All right, progress. We finally have the software loaded without any errors or exceptions thrown. Let's see, we've got some log files. Let's see if we can operate the robot arm from this system. Well, that seems to work. Apparently, this is the home position for the XYZ axis controller. Looks like uh, it wants me to read the manual before I mess around with that. So I mentioned the lab on a chip units have some kind of DRM or CD keys, and it, it looks like those are set to unlimited uses, so I think we're good there. And the admin mode did expire in 2011, but the computer still thinks it's 2009, so we're perfectly fine. All right, so my $85 DNA sequencer seems to physically work, although, again, I still don't know how it works, what it does, or what anything in the manual means, so we're a long way from actually doing any DNA sequencing with this. However, the mechanics of it seem to function, the software seems to function, and once I hack together some uh, COM cords for it, that all seems to work great. I think before we do any bioscience with this, we're going to have to consult some experts. We're going to have to find out what can you actually do with this, how do you actually do it, what do you need. It seems like there's some extra chemicals and parts involved, maybe some precursor steps, maybe some afterward steps. Obviously, that's going to take more time to figure out. We're not going to do all that in this video. I wanted to just get this thing out of the box, see what we had, see what we're missing, and then from there, maybe we can figure out what things we need to do anything useful with this. We're definitely going to come back to this thing in a future video, if not in multiple future videos, because it's pretty cool. I think there's some stuff we can do with it. Hopefully, we can figure out something interesting and useful to do with it without breaking it, because I think it might still be useful to somebody out there, even if I can't get any use out of it. Um, maybe there's a developing nation or a low-budget lab that could use this thing for something legitimate. Or at least more legitimate than a small YouTube channel trying to do stupid jokey things with it. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe so you see if and when we actually do anything with our DNA sequencer. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Any unusual experiment can produce unusual results. <laughs>